and the underground and the abandoned parts of the city. There were clubs and hangouts that only certain villains or organizations could visit. The hangouts were for the normal taste of the middle class villains, but the main place was the Club of Nightmares that catered to the famous villain groups. The rumors of how intoxicating and villainous the parties were every night made all the villains that went there wish the night never ended. Hawks was investigating a new villain that had appeared overnight and there were and their quirk was more than dangerous. Some heroes claimed their quirk was like a dragon because of the destruction they could cause. Other heroes had claimed that they had seen silver wings and they were like fire. The only lead Hawks had was where they worked. Working with the League of Villains and Heroes had its advantages. It turned out Dobby knew them, not as much as Tomura did, and coincidentally the League was invited to a club by them. That night was the first time Hawks had ever met someone who was opposite of him. Toga hugged you first when she seen you, then introduced you to Hawks. This is Hawks. We decided to bring him. Never seen you around here before. Hawks could feel you looking him over at the same time. Hawks was doing the same. From how you looked, didn't seem like Hawks had accurate information because he didn't see your wings or silver fire. Your hair was lightly shaved on both sides except for the middle and long and silver. Eyes like a morning star, four black lines across your left eye. Your body built was almost like hawks, but a little more, less slender, however your touch was warm. Hawks seen four body piercings along your collarbone with black moon studs. From your clothing choices, they complemented your body well. And then the Hawks heard your voice again. I'll get to know you better later, Hawks. Oh, do you have to work? Yes, Toga. Can't disappoint, right? Before you turned around, you smiled at Hawks, and that's when Hawks seen silver flames in your eyes. When you disappeared into the crowd of people, that was when Toga looked at Hawks and said a few words. Be careful, Hawks. They bite more than Dobby or myself. I doubt that, Toga. The music kept playing then as Hawks was on his ninth bottle of beer. That was when he noticed the music changed. Hawks was sitting with Toga and everyone else at the table. Soon everyone's attention was on the Black Diamond stage. The person on the stage was singing into a microphone headset, and their voice was hypnotizing and the song was familiar in a strange way. Hawks realized that it was you at the moment. The stage was covered in silver flames that were cold. Hawks couldn't keep himself from watching the way your body moved and as he sang. Out of nowhere, Hawks remembered something. Before Hawks could remember the thought, another person was dancing with you too. To Hawks maybe a little too close. Even though Hawks barely knew you and didn't have a relationship with you yet. Now that was the plan. Instead of turning you into the heroes. Hawks was thinking something else, but this plan would take some time. After you sang for the people in the club, you decided to go home, and Hawks offered to walk you home. Should a hero be walking with a villain, Hawks? How did you know I was a hero? Before Hawks could react, his back was against the brick wall. Your finger traced the collar of his shirt. 
And as he looked into your eyes, your flames faintly appeared on the collar of his shirt, not burning him. Let's say my flames know people's hearts, Hawks. So you know me already. Maybe, or maybe not, Hawks. Without thinking or even any sense, Hawks had his hands on your hips, pulling you closer to him, sliding your hands on Hawks' back under his jacket. You knew Hawks could feel your flames. You already knew what Hawks wanted to do, so the both of you went back to one of the abandoned hideouts. How close Hawks got to you in just one night was something he didn't regret. The next morning Hawks woke up. He was alone in bed wondering where you had gone. Back at your place, Toga was sitting with you on the porch of the mansion. I hope you did as Tomara asked. Of course, Toga. Anything for Tomara. Without any emotion, you gave Toga the information from Hawk's phone. Also, the other information that you found out. Before you left, Hawks, while he was asleep, you put a tracker and quirk diffuser in his jacket. Still remembering who you worked for. Any feelings you had, they could never surface. Looking at the two winning bands on your ring finger, you were surprised Hawks didn't remember you. The land and hero no more. Too bad I erased your memories, my hawks. Hello everyone, this is Skull K with an update. I'm back from my little sick leave. I kind of got a cold. I wasn't doing too well. I didn't want to worry anybody, but I've been working on some new fan fictions. And also, I'm happy that a few people got to see the second channel, the first video on there. And I'm happy you enjoyed that. Also, been seeing a few new comments on the videos. We're happy to have you here. And if you have any video requests, then please let me know and leave a comment down below. And I'm just happy to be back with all of you guys. I hope you all have been doing well. And look forward to more surprises. Oh, and sorry, I forgot to mention that this video was a special request. I really do hope I did a good job of it. Anyway, let me know if you have any requests for videos or any continuations of any series that I've already made. And have a good night or day. And later, you guys. <laughs>